Hello everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Rachel. I am an aromatherapist for humans and animals. I do quite a few different things. And I wanted to just put this video out there because there's a lot of uh, misconception around essential oils and their safety, especially with animals. And I also wanted to emphasize how beneficial they are to our mental and physical well-being, especially at um, this current time in history with everything that we are all going through. So this video is to talk about essential oils and look at the science behind them and the benefits of them. And I'm going to start off by mostly focusing on the neurotransmitters and how essential oils work on those in our bodies. So recent preclinical and clinical studies have shown various responses in the nervous system leading to anxiolytic, antidepressant, sedative and anticonvulsant effects of essential oils on us. Experimentation in animal models, mostly rats, has evidenced the involvement of multiple neurotransmitter systems in the mode um, of the action of the essential oils. These trials have demonstrated that the influence of essential oils in psychological parameters such as blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, brain waves composition, and cortisol serum levels within the simultaneous psychological effects. So more clinical research is required. We've only really done researches on rats and humans and not many other animals like horses, cats, dogs. And we definitely are desperate for more research on how essential oils can, you know, how we can prove that they are beneficial to things like anxiety, stress and depression in humans and animals. So we do know that we have to do more, but the bottom line is that current clinical research over the years is required to validate their influence in the human central nervous system. This will then enable the development of essential oil based drugs for the treatment of mental illnesses like depression, anxiety and dementia. However, the fact that these trials are non-existent doesn't stop people worldwide knowing and understanding historically and from first hand experience uh, just how powerful essential oils are. So essential oils have been recognised as therapeutic agents since ancient times for their wide range of pharmacological and psychological properties. They are a complex mixture of volatile odour com odor compounds. Historical records show that essential oils were already in use more than 2000 years ago in ancient Egypt, India, Persia, China, um, to prevent illnesses, for the treatment of diseases, and in religious ceremonies. Uh, essential oils have drawn attention from scientists, practitioners, and therapists for their biological activities, uh, including, and not limited to, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, uh, and anti-cancer properties. So neurotransmitters are chemical messengers used by the nervous system to help neurons, nerve cells, communicate with one another and transmit signals to other target cells throughout the body. These target cells may be in your glands, muscles or other neurons. Some neurons produce only one type of neurotransmitter. The coexistence of multiple neurotransmitters at the same time in the synapse allows neurons to exert several influences at the same time. So billions of neurotransmitter molecules work constantly to keep our brains functioning, managing everything from our breathing to our heartbeat to our learning and concentration levels. A balance of neurotransmitters is necessary to prevent certain health conditions such as depression, anxiety, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. The brain needs neurotransmitters to regulate many necessary functions, including the heart rate, the breathing, the sleep cycles, the digestion, the mood, the concentration, the appetite, muscle movements. So when it comes to understanding essential oils, they are lipophilic, uh, fat friendly and super small, allowing them to access and bind to cell membranes, which are also compromised primarily of fat. This compatibility on chemical composition allows essential oils to bind to and modulate cell receptors and transporters, much like the blood-brain barrier and gut lining. 
your cellular membrane serves to block most substances from accessing the cell in that same way, while selectively allowing nutrient, nutrients and oxygen to pass through and waste material to be released. The selectively permeable nature of the cellular membrane relies on specialised transport mechanisms to help permeate your cell membrane and move into the cell without being limited by the tr cell's transport machinery. Now bear with me because this will start making sense soon. This process is known as passive diffusion and only a few substances, including gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, alcohol, some drugs, anaesthetics and essential oils are capable of moving in this way. Which shows how powerful they are. This is because like your brain cells, your cellular membranes are composed of lipids. Essential oils are lipid soluble and small, allowing them to directly traverse your cellular membrane. Essential oils have the ability to influence cells even when there um, is physiologic compromises such as during times of poor nutrition or uh, environmental threats. For example, one study found that smelling bergamot, lavender and lemon essential oils helps trigger your brain to release serotonin and dopamine. So the vagus nerve is a really important nerve in the body. Now this vagus nerve runs down the side of your neck and is a long nerve responsible for the regulation of internal organ functions such as digestion and heart rate and respiratory rate, as well as the vasomotor activity and certain reflex actions, such as coughing, sneezing, swallowing and vomiting. So essential oils can have a really big impact on this and can slow down heart rate and help anti-inflame the body and the brain. Since the impact of this will massively influence the nerve and digestive state of the body, it's incredible how essential oils can impact its function. Pharmaceutical drugs also target GABA receptors in the brain, just like essential oils do, altering their function to help modulate your mood, support relaxation, stress and anxiety reduction, pain relief, lower blood pressure, improve sleep and altering their function to help enhance your mood to relieve anxiety and depression. Essential oils are just a natural yet powerful approach. So I'd like to just have a quick moment to talk to you about the influence of essential oils on some common types of neurotransmitters that you may be familiar with, at least some of them. So dopamine first, uh, which is really um, important. So this is linked to motivation and reward. Its effects are beyond the neurological system, important for memory, learning, behavior, movement and coordination. It supports feelings of pleasure, movement and motivation and can also play a role in addictive behaviors. So the reason I say this is important is because of our children on tech today and the addictive nature with being online at such a young age and the impact this has on them. Essential oils can be very powerful in helping to counteract this. So this is a massive problem today, online gaming for, that our kids are faced with the online schooling from the pandemic, etc. A dopamine deficiency can cause Parkinson's disease later in life. Research, among other things, obviously, it's not good to have deficiencies or excesses of anything in any way. So research found that lemon essential oil reduced anxiety and boosts both serotonin and dopamine. And I have found this highly effective with children addicted to gaming, which and other oils, which permanently changes the physical development of the brain because different ones will work for different children. And I let them find the ones that are going to work for them the best. GABA contributes to motor control, vision and other brain functions. You might consider GABA to be like the brakes of the brain, helping to shift your brain into a lower and calmer gear and improve in focus and concentration. Research found that linalool, which is a key constitute in essential oils like lavender, clary sage, basil, uh, cilantro and coriander, uh, helped to modulate GABA receptors and enhance the inhibitory tone of the nervous system. Rose and frankincense combine to the receptors on GABA cells and helps balance your brain's level of excitation and inhibition, which is vital for normal brain function and a healthy nervous system. So symptoms of low levels of GABA can present 
in ways such as anxiety, chronic stress, depression, difficulty concentrating, memory problems, muscle pain, headaches, insomnia, uh, insomnia and substance use disorders. Another one is endorphins. Uh, these inhibit pain signals and create an energised euphoric feeling. They are also the body's natural pain relievers. Your feel-good neurotransmitters are opiate chemicals released during exercise or in response to stressful situations or sources of pain or stress to help reduce pain and promote a sort of bliss state, providing a sense of well-being and euphoria in general. Certain aromas, actions and foods can lift your mood by influencing the production of endorphins. Research found that vanilla helps reduce anxiety. A study at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Centre found that patients undergoing MRIs who breathed vanilla scented air reported 63% less anxiety than those who breathed normal air. Ylang Ylang also stimulates the part of the brain that releases endorphins. So epinephrine, aka adrenaline, is involved in the body's fight or fl flight response. Um, I think anxiety and stress are the biggest pandemics in society today at the moment. Very serious issues that are not really being addressed. Um, so it is adrenaline is both a hormone and a neuro neurotransmitter, actually. So over time, chronic stress can lead to health problems, which we all know, such as decreased immunity, high blood pressure, diabetes and heart disease. It increases your heart rate and helps heighten your awareness. A surplus of adrenaline can be linked with manic behaviours such as paranoia, ADHD and cardiac arrest. A deficit of adrenaline can be linked with low energy and depression. Essential oils that calm are clove, live, cinnamon, galbanum, manuka, rosemary and thyme. Whereas black pepper, rose, grapefruit, they've been shown to stimulate. Inhalation of rose essential oil resulted in a 30% decrease of adrenaline levels. Glutamate, a main neurotransmitter in your brain, also known as your memory neurotransmitter. Glutamate or glutamic acid is involved in virtually every major brain function. It supports cognitive recognition, um, emotions, sensory information and motor coordination and is linked to other neurotransmitter activity. When glutamate is in excess, it is extremely toxic to the brain and nervous system, which means that it overstimulates brain cells to the point of killing them or damaging them enough to cause severe mitochondrial dysfunction associated with low muscle tone and neurological inflammation. Excess glutamate can lead to disorders including autism, obsessive compulsive, hyperactivity, complex motor stereotypes, tics, insomnia, anxiety, seizures, sensory processing, addiction, depression, chronic fatigue, PANS, PANDAS, Alzheimer's, and also depletes glutathione levels, which are vital for detoxification, controlling inflammation and gut health. So glutamate also has the ability to regulate other neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin and GABA. Lavender helps modulate glutamate receptors and Bergamot has shown to prevent glut glutamate accumulation. So we, we never really talk about these things in society. We just go to a doctor, get a drug and somewhere behind that drug, all these things are known. Oh, it does this, it does that, it increases this, it reduces that, it holds off this. You know, but talking about these things and understanding them and having the power to use different essential oils that your body adjusts to and chooses because by smelling them, the nose knows. You'll smell something and you'll, you'll immediately be attracted to it or no, I don't really like that one. So instead of just taking a pill that will fix something, you can select what is specific to you individually that will help in a healthy, non-toxic, non-chemical fashion. So then you have serotonin. Your mood transmitter, serotonin, has a modulatory function and contributes to happiness and positive mood, enhancing your brain activity over many cognitive, emotional, physiological and metabol metabolic systems. It supports mood, digestion, pain, the body's circadian rhythm, sleep, blood, clotting, wakefulness, appetite, level of aggression, body temperature and neuroendocrine function. Serotonin levels are enhanced with exercise and light exposure. 
So there's a fact that the, I don't know if you know this fact, that the gut makes more serotonin than the brain, which is one reason why a problematic gut issue causes behaviour and nervous ailments. A deficit of serotonin contributes to mood disorders like anxiety and depression. And it's the same in animals. You know, if a, if a dog has a bad gut issue, the behaviour can be bad. Lavender essential oils and linalool were able to bind to the serotonin transporter, which may have an inhibitory effect on serotonin reuptake. It's interesting that studies correlate your sense of smell with depression, noting that reduced olfactory sensitivity is often associated with clinical depression. So a lot of people who are clinically depressed have no sense of smell or very limited sense of smell. And I find that really fascinating because we don't talk about that either. Um, and it's interesting over the pandemic because one of the side effects is long term, you know, loss of smell and lots of people have been really struggling and depressed. So we just need a few essential oils and we'll feel a lot better. So this brings us more on to focus about the animal side. Everything we have said, I've said above for humans relates to animals too. Unlike their wild counterparts, captive and domesticated animals rarely have the opportunity to forage on medicinal plants or come across aromatherapy plants um, that are used in essential oils. It is far more obvious with them that a problem like a digestive issue will cause a behavioural problem, especially dogs, but horses too and cats, all of them, all of us, we're, we all work the same way really. Some products specifically high in nervine and adaptogen properties support the nervous system and induce a calm state. Nutrient powders allow an animal to appease hunger-driven pangs and puts the gut in a fulfilled state instead of a contracted state. This benefits the metabolism and detoxification providing oxygen-rich blood to supply all the body systems, including the central nervous system and the brain. This stabilises the animal and allows them to think more clearly and be more able to determine a flight or um, fright, rest or digest response. Allowing the animal access to nutritious powders places their body and mind in the right physical condition to cope better. I hope you don't mind the noise, my cat has just jumped on the cat wheel. Um, sorry about that. So a poor gut directly influences their behaviours. If you fix the gut and you can, you can work on the behaviour. I know too many dog trainers who focus on behaviour issues by saying, oh, change the diet. Especially if they are experienced, uh, inexperienced with the type of food that you may be feeding your animal on. And this is actually the worst thing that you can do because if the, say you've got a dog that is raw fed and you have a, tra a dog trainer that doesn't like or understand raw feeding and they say, well, it's obviously the food, you need to change the food and then we can work on this. But the worst thing you can then do is change the diet and aggravate the gut even further. So if that dog is nervous and has a nervous problem like anxiety, the anxiety is going to cause the gut issue, not anything that they are eating. It's not a food issue, it's a, an emotional issue. So changing the diet on top of that is the absolute worst thing that you can do. So essential oils have anti-inflammatory components and they can work simultaneously on multiple problems. They have no nutritional value, but they have a lot of power in other ways. The animals will fascinate you with their innate ability to know what they need and they will select very specifically and in certain orders. They will have a clear choice of what they want and what they do not want. The best way to describe it is when a woman is pregnant and we have that really strong like and dislike to things and we crave things or we feel physically sick just thinking or smelling something. Even the greediest of animals will not just eat or inhale any essential oils or powders or herbs given and will only take what they need. It helps on all levels, spiritual, physical, emotional and psychological. And in the case of terminal diagnosis, it can bring peace and calm to support end of life care. 
it can help release past trauma from when they were puppies or kittens or um, foals or previous lives. So my senior lab chose very specific end of life oils that she wanted and that made her really relaxed, happy and content. She was so calm and she wasn't before. She was really nervous um, for the first few years I had her. You know, she, she was very easily uh, nervous and anxious about things because she had a lot of health problems start quite young. It's through her that I learned all these things, really. So she chose certain oils. She had no pain. They were anti-inflammatory. They helped release trauma and fear. Um, and she was never nervous of what lay ahead. So it's a beautiful gift to give our beloved companions. And when the time came for her to be euthanized, she was relaxed and surrounded by essential oils and flowers. And she passed without any fear or anxiety at all. It was beautiful and really peaceful. When animals select certain oils, I will offer oils that help me to see a clear path as to whether they are seeking anti-inflammatory options, something for their hormonal system, circulatory, nervine, digestive, detox, and so on. It becomes really clear. Um, anxious dogs often have gut issues because being anxious upsets the digestive system. So you need to fix that and the anxiety in order to bring forth balance. Don't just blame the food and the diet if the digestion is bad because it's often not the root cause. And it's the same with hormones too. I'm, I've suffered with polycystic ovaries and endometriosis most of my life. And um, I know for a fact that as soon as those hormones kick off, the digestive system kicks off. So there's nothing to do with what I eat. My hormones just send my digestive system into chaos so it's got nothing to do with diet in in many many cases actually but almost everything will upset your digestive system so these su solutions support animals handling past life current forgotten trauma physical or mental health challenges and struggling to settle into new areas or new homes or rescue animals who have probably had to scavenge or been fed very cheap and poor diets based on what's been donated to charities uh, or people who just couldn't afford to look after them or didn't bother looking after them properly. So a lot of nutritional and emotional um, deficiencies will be present there. Stress causes disease. If we help animals to handle their trauma and stress, then we can avoid disease in exactly the same way that we can as humans. So our bodies benefit from the oils in the same way um, and follow the same rules. Stress equals disease. Pranic healing with essential oils will just cleanse and balance the entire body. I have seen horses, cats and dogs eyes glaze over during essential oil inhalation and they just release and let go. And they, they actually just kind of leave their body. <laughs> you just see them glaze over and poof, they've gone and they'll come back maybe 10, 20 minutes later. It's incredible to watch and it surprises many people. Essential oils are volatile, organic constitute constituents of plants that contribute to fragrance and taste. They are extracted from plants via distillation or cold pressing and they can pose a toxic risk to household pets, especially to cats. They are rapidly absorbed both orally and across the skin and are then metabolized in the liver. But if they're absorbed through the skin, they don't always go. If, if they're not through the digestive system, they don't always go through the full urinary waste system that it could go through. So cats lack an essential enzyme in their liver, unlike humans and other animals. And as such, they have difficulty metabolizing and eliminating certain toxins like essential oils that are high in phenols and salicylates. So, in fact, anything absorbed via the skin is probably at higher risk of being more toxic than something in ingested. Because if you ingest it, it will go through the digestive system, through the kidneys, through the liver. And it's got quite a lot of steps in order to help get rid of that waste and toxic material. If you put it on your skin, it goes directly into the bloodstream. And this is why the wrong essential oil placed physically on a cat does end up in fatal errors, uh, fatal cases. And this is human error. A cat would never choose to put that oil on itself. So 
the higher the concentration of the phenyl and salicylates in an essential oil, then the greater risk to the cat. So some are obviously more toxic than others. Symptoms that develop depend on the type of oil involved in the exposure and can include drooling, vomiting, tremors, ataxia, wobbliness, respiratory distress, low heart rate, low, bloody, uh, low body temperature and liver failure. If you're interested in using essential oils for your cat or for any animal, you should really do so only as directed by an experienced and qualified practitioner or vet. Don't just Google it and figure it out. I see so many people go, oh, I just do this and put this on. So they've been lucky. Um, and some cats are just more sensitive than others. And just, you know, you have to know what you're doing. It's the same with raw feeding. You can't just stick a raw pork chop down and expect them to get all the nutritional value from it. You have to educate yourself and know what you're doing. So the main danger posed to cats by essential oils is respiratory irritation, which can cause a burning sensation in the cat's nose and throat, coughing, wheezing and difficulty breathing. If you diffuse oils in your home, it should not cause a problem for your cat, um, as oil used in a diffuser is highly diluted versus direct topical application or dietary supplementation. However, you should never leave your cat confined to a space where oils are being diffused. I have eight cats, hence the cat wheel noise, because they keep competing on it. Um, and I even use oils that are considered toxic in my home, quite a lot actually, because I have loads of oils. They are always able to remove themselves from a room with a diffuser. If I put oils on my body, they are diluted and I always wear a dressing gown until they are absorbed to avoid the cat being placed in direct contact with me. Um, I have never had a cat try to lick the oils off my arms on, or legs, for example, unlike my dogs. Uh, cats just know it's not what they need. I have never had a cat indicate that it wanted an oil placed directly on their body. Dogs and horses do a lot, but cats, they just don't want it. They want to inhale it at a distance that suits, at a distance that suits them. Um... Cats instead prefer to roll in things like herbs and breathe the oils in uh, and the one, only the oils that they want. They like fresh and dried herbs. Their way of releasing the, arom the aromatherapy from those dried and fresh herbs is by rolling in it. It's what they do in the wild, in the garden. And they choose to, they, they are very specific as to what oils they want. And sometimes they may choose a toxic one, but as long as they are allowed to set their distance. Cats don't tend to go over and stick their noses and tongues in the essential oil bottles. It's just, it's just not what they tend to do. So the key to safety is allowing them the choice and allowing them a big selection and allowing them to move away. For example, a horse may select something fairly toxic from a hedgerow, but in combination with another type of plant, it's not toxic and you will see that they will often eat a little bit of one thing a little bit of another and then come back to something else and mix it up so they they are diluting it with different plants actually it's the same with essential oils allowing them to select the components that they need they will balance the impact with other oils and in other ways they will set their distance uh, they will just have a quick inhalation some of them they will really sit for a good 15 or 20 minutes just inhaling one or two set oils that they really are getting a lot of benefit from with what i do the animals are perfectly safe and i teach you how to do it safely so i hope you found this informative and enjoyed it um, i have hoped to show you that essential oils have incredible power and can completely alter the behaviour and mental state of a human or an animal and also has phys physical properties that can help too. They can be absorbed through creams and oils in the body. You, for us humans, you can't beat a nice face cream or body oil or a roller to put it on your temples, your neck and your wrists. Um, inhalers are brilliant for children and cats uh, because they can inhale the aroma when they want without any risk of touching it and it going on their skin and having a, a, an a, allergic reaction the inhalers have worked incredibly well for children with ADD people with, with animals with anxiety stress um, helping to calm them down on dog walks um, or you know not trashing their stables there are so many positives 
and the amount of power behind essential oils is limitless. Um, and also insomnia it can help you sleep. So you just have to know about the oils, and that's what I've studied quite in depth over the years, because um, some stimulate, some calm, and some do both. There is endless benefits. Remember, all the scaremongering and myths around the dangers of essential oils of animals is because people leave out a single toxic oil and a cat might spill it or step in it by accident or just be curious about it but if they had a choice then they wouldn't be um, or the owner has stroked them or decided that putting a little bit of this on is going to be fine and it will help keep the fleas off you but in some cases one time you know one one drop of essential oil is very 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 powerful there's a lot in that one drop which is why you know you can pay 80 pounds for just a mil of a, a certain essential oil you don't need a lot of them at all. They're very, very strong. And um, because the cats are all pheromones and aromatherapy, they're highly sensitive to all these aromas and the hundreds, you know, some essential oils can have two, three, four hundred different components in just one essential oil. And the cats are very sensitive to all that. But just because some of them can be toxic, you know, they are pheromonal aromatheric animals so it's really sad to deprive them of such a wonderful experience but my cats love essential oils so you have to know what you're doing you have to follow the safety and the rules and the guidance um, as a consultant i don't do anything for your animal i come and teach you how to do it and empower you on knowing your animal and knowing why your animal wants certain things so that you can carry on with that in the future if we empower ourselves with knowledge and understanding, we ensure that mistakes are avoided. Animals adore essential oils, just like we do, and our ignorance should not deprive them of that lovely experience. They make it very clear what they want, how they want it, and the products that I use do differ between humans and animals. There's certain things that an animal wouldn't want that we humans love, and vice versa. I use many oils for the animals that I have never used on a human, like garlic. But I'm happy to use garlic on you if you want to deter anybody. <laughs> so it's all possible. So I hope this has helped. Um, fantastic things, essential oils. And my teacher said to me many times, just use your oils and you will be fine. And it's true, by having those essential oils and putting them on me whenever I felt a bit stressed or anxious, it just, just doesn't happen anymore. And same with my children, you know, very calm, very relaxed. Um, and all my animals. It's an amazing difference. Very life-changing. So bringing essential oils into your life and your animals' lives and your children's lives can have a massive life-changing positive effect. So I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions, do let me know. Don't ask me loads of questions because I'm not going to do an aromatherapy course because there's a lot of uh, things to know and to learn. But there are some good books out there that you can buy and teach yourself with. Just don't go buy random things on Facebook and, oh, just add this and this will help keep fleas off because I've seen some very scary comments that would actually be a bad idea. So I don't tend to apply things. I allow the animal to select themselves and choose. So thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed it and um, take care.